Two years ago, I thought to myself, I wonder how hard it would be to strap some controls to a nut and turn it into a handheld gaming console. Well, almost a year of my life and an 11 video long YouTube series later and the Nuck Deck was finally born. Even though it was the crowning achievement in my ever-growing collection of homemade game consoles, I knew there was a bunch of stuff on it I could still improve. Never being one to shy away from a challenge at the beginning of this year, I decided to do it all again with a much newer mini PC and a whole year of extra experience under my belt. So come along with me for the ride as we build the best mini PC based handheld game console the internet has ever seen. The first thing I need to do is upgrade to a better mini PC. While I was building the Nuck Deck, my audience was very vocal about wanting to see a modern AMD mini PC in the build, so this time around, that's exactly what I'll do. I picked up a B-Link SER5 with a Ryzen 7 5700U and 16GB of RAM. This probably wouldn't have been everyone's first choice, but I still have to keep my budget sensible and this brand and model was easy for me to get locally in Australia. Next up is the display. This is one of the main things I wasn't happy about on the original Nuck Deck, so this time around I wanted an off-the-shelf solution that's brighter, higher resolution and with a nice glass touchscreen built in. So I picked up this 8 inch 1280 by 800 IPS display from Waveshare, which should work nicely. I checked over the display with my multimeter and found some points that I can solder wires to to provide power to the display. I also picked up some nice little USB-C connector breakouts so I can connect the signal wires for the touchscreen without taking up much space. Now I have the display and mini PC sorted, I'll hook it up through the Nuckdex power management system so that I can test the runtime of the battery and work out how much capacity I need to include in the design to get the runtime that I want. I found that the system peaks at around 3.7 amps at 19 volts, or about 70 watts. I'd like to aim for about an hour of runtime at full load, so I picked up four of these 5000 milliamp hour 21700 size cells, which should give me a total pack capacity of just over 69 watt hours. Nice. I'll spot weld some tabs on the batteries and solder up some wires so that the pack can be split in half and mounted on either side of the console. With all of that out of the way, the next thing to look at is the controls. Making nice feeling buttons is surprisingly one of the harder parts of building consoles, but I think I've got a pretty good method nailed down now. First, I machine a positive of the buttons out of aluminium on my little CNC machine. Then, I polish the positive, make a silicon mould of it, and then finally I can cast nice little resin buttons in whatever colours I'd like. If that all sounds like a heap of work, you'd be right. This time around, I found an easier way. I'm just going to buy a set of buttons from AliExpress. I picked up a set of switch light buttons and membranes for a couple of bucks which I'll use for all the face buttons on the console. The trigger and shoulder buttons will need to be much larger to suit the console of this size, so I guess we'll be stuck making those ourselves. While I was on AliExpress, I also picked up a set of full size Hall Effect joysticks for a PS4 and some Xbox One joystick caps to see if I can make them fit. On the Nuck Deck, I ended up using low profile joysticks because I didn't have enough room inside the controllers for the depth of full size joysticks. But this time around, and thanks to another comment from one of my audience members, I realised I can go with a Wii U style layout where both of the joysticks are on top, which also puts them in the deepest section of the controller grips and means I should have enough room for proper joysticks. I've had so many people People comment to tell me I absolutely need to have a trackpad and I knew it was going to be a squeeze but I also wanted to give it a go to see what all the fuss was about. So I grabbed the smallest trackpad sensor I could find to see if I can incorporate it this time around. With all of the decisions out of the way it's time to start looking at the design. The first thing I have to do is disassemble the mini PC and measure up the components so I can include them in my model. I also need a model of the display but fortunately Waveshare provides models so I just downloaded theirs and moved on to measuring up the rest of the components. Now that I have a rough idea of the size and shape of the console, I'll do some test prints to check the position and feel of the controls, and I'll adjust them and then repeat the process until I'm happy with the design. Once I'm happy with the shape of the console and the position of all the controls, I'll hollow out the housing, split it in two, and add all of the mounting points for my hardware. Because I'm not using a standard controller layout, I've got to design my own controller PCBs. So I whipped up some designs in KiCad and sent them off to this project sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay have supported my channel throughout this entire project by providing most of the parts and all of the PCBs I needed while I worked my way through a few revisions to get everything working. Without their support, this project never would have happened, so I owe them a huge thanks for helping me get it started. As well as their PCB services, they offer many types of 3D printing, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication. So make sure you show them some love and check them out at the link in the video description if you're ever in need of their services. When I built the original Nuck Deck, I used acrylic to make the housing. 
It worked pretty well, but it is very brittle and easily damaged, and I wanted to find something that isn't transparent, so this time I'm going to give HDP a go. It's cheap, easy to machine, and quite flexible, so it should be a bit more robust compared to the acrylic. It is a bit of an oily feeling plastic, but I've painted it before in the past, so hopefully it will be alright. It wouldn't be one of my projects if I didn't have a machining montage, so let's fire up my little CNC machine and make the rest of these parts. And just like that, the housing is complete. The paint colour I've used is cobalt blue, and I finished it off with a clear coat on top. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the finish, but I am worried about how well this paint is going to stay on the plastic in the long term. I've used adhesion primer, and I've even made sure the surface was fairly rough before painting, but I've already had bits of it flake off while test fitting parts. If the paint doesn't last, I might have to make another housing in the future using a different material that paints a bit better. But for now, this will do. I have a table full of parts, so let's get stuck into the build. I've already glued the joystick surround rings in place, stuck the trackpad down and installed all of the threaded inserts in the front half of the housing. I did have the machining break through slightly between the trackpad and the display as the remaining plastic is very thin. But it's not going to cause any problems, so I've left it as is. First, we need to fit the display. I've applied thin double-sided tape all the way around the bezel so it can be stuck into the housing from the front. Next, we can bolt the shoulder buttons in place. These are fully 3D printed and I'm just relying on the plastic to act as a spring. Since they barely have to move, I've had very good luck with this style of shoulder buttons in the past as I haven't even had a single printed spring wear out yet. Now I'll install all of the front facing buttons and membranes. These three buttons are the only custom ones on the front of the console. I resin printed them and then painted them white so that they match the rest of the switch light buttons. They push on tactile switches so there is no membrane to install for them. I'll also need to install the speakers and the volume buttons before the front two controller PCBs go in. The rear controller PCBs can go in next which house the joysticks and provide the mounting point for the Hall Effect triggers, followed by the 3D printed rumble motor mounts all of the controller PCBs connect together with ribbon cables and the speakers get plugged into the speaker connector on the back of the display. I'm going to take this chance to tape down some of the wires so they don't get in the way of things in the next few steps. Now is probably also a good time to install the HDMI connector. I designed this dogleg style adapter to take the HDMI connections from the display and pass them over to a ribbon cable that also happens to line up with the PC's HDMI port. The ribbon cable needs to feed through this slot in the outlet cover so I'll pass it through now and then put the front two bolts in the outlet cover plate to hold it all in place. Next, the battery pack can be installed, followed by the display mounting bars, which also provide a mounting spot for the PC. I had 3D printed these originally, but they were bending in the prototype, so for the final build, I've CNC'd some out of aluminium. Now, for the tricky bit, the PC and power management. This little power management board is another thing I've had to design to make this project possible. It goes between the battery and the computer and basically functions as a UPS. It handles all of the battery related tasks and reports the capacity back to the computer, so it can be displayed just like any other laptop or game system. I've already soldered some wires behind the power jack on the mini PC and connected them to the outlet of the power management system. All that's left now is to connect up the power wires from the docking connector to the secondary charger input on the PMS and the USB wires to one of the spare USB ports on the back of the computer. The other one then gets connected to the controller and we can connect the HDMI adapter to the computer and finally plug the battery in. Last but not least, the back cover is held on with eight screws in the back and the final two in the top through the outlet plate and that's it. Let's take a look at the final product.
I'm so happy with how this one came out. Everything about it is a massive step up from my last project. The controller layout is just so much more comfortable and the 8 inch screen is a much better size for this kind of content. I've really enjoyed this entire process and I hope you guys have enjoyed following along at home. Thank you all for your support throughout this massive project. I couldn't have done it without all of the wonderful comments and suggestions to keep me going. I'm going to work on getting the files ready for other people to make, but in the meantime, I already have a few ideas in mind for my next projects that I can start on. If you've got a suggestion of something you'd really like to see, make sure you let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to see what I build next. See you all next time.